Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic because I just changed my glasses over. Um, where I'm recording this very late today actually. I've had an incredibly busy day. Um, but we're going to be having a look at a puzzle called Stretching Squares by Ambrose and Analytical Ninja. So we have the two brains of these great constructors, both of whom have featured uh, individually on the channel before, uh, have come up with this one. And this one's interesting because it's just got two stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany, a 98% approval rating, a beautiful looking grid. I love the idea of this with just these, these sort of boxes created out of cages and short thermometers. It's absolutely lovely looking. Uh, and this has been suggested to us a number of times as being great for a video. So I'm sure that's going to be true. And I'll read you the rules in a moment or two. I've got a few things to say or tell you about first. There is going to be a StarCraft 2 video because I did manage to do the <laughs> pig's challenge. I have done it. It was really, really hard. Um, but there will be a StarCraft 2. It's a little bit frivolous and you'll have to forgive me. But some of you have expressed an interest. So it will appear on the channel at some point. Also, there was a bonus video this morning um, because I solved today's Times Crossword, which was a bit of a brute. Um, so I thought it might make a good video. So that should be available on the channel. If you like your crossword content, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen. Um, oh, yes. And Mark and I were at dinner last night. We had a very, very nice dinner um, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the crossword magazine that we started together. Uh, way back in the well, 20 years ago, I suppose, <laughs> um, called the Magpie. Uh, it's almost certainly not going to be very interesting to many of you at all. It has an incredibly small circulation and is a monthly magazine um, that publish, publishes the hardest cryptic crosswords in the world. Um, and it's something we're very proud of and that, it, that, that it keeps going to this day. Um, anyway, uh, we had a we had a dinner to celebrate that last night, and one of those at the dinner, um, Shane Shabankare, uh, shared with us this little a chess problem, no less. And I thought that you guys, I know that you're all jolly clever and probably a lot better at chess uh, than Mark and me. I thought you might like to see it. It is quite an interesting one indeed. It's probably jolly famous. And if it is, I apologize for sharing with you something so uh, so well known. But to, to us, we, we hadn't seen it before. And, and the question is, is this possible? Is this position possible after Black plays its ninth move. Now, I won't say anything, actually. I'm not going to spoil anything, but that is that is the question. If you if you have views on this, uh, do drop us a comment um, on the video and, and let us know. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, you know me. I'm a massive nerd for anything puzzly. So uh, that that intrigued me. And I'm sure for some of you, it will it will be diverting for a few moments at least. Um, what else can I tell you about? Um, oh, yeah, I've got to give a shout out today to Jasper over in the Netherlands. Now, Jasper, I, I'm, I get very nervous when I'm asked to do this. Um, but I believe this afternoon you have been defending your PhD thesis. Um, in, in the UK, it's called a viva, where you have to sit before a committee and um, defend your findings. Uh, I believe that's been going on this afternoon, pending a party this evening. Uh, your, your thesis is in theoretical and computational biology, about which I know nothing. Um, but I, I really hope it has gone very, very well and that you have uh, you have you are, that you're a doctor. Do you become a doctor the moment you defend your thesis? You probably do. Um, but Jasper, I hope you, I, I really hope that you have defended it. The reason I know about this is your partner, uh, Sana, wrote to us. I hope, Sana, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I really do. Um, but I hope the two of you are able to have the most magnificent party this evening. And I hope you have a large chocolate cake. Now, there's also chocolate cake in store, I hope, for Paula, whose birthday it is today. And Paula, I know this because your, hus um, yeah, your husband, Robert, wrote to us and said that you, you'd appreciate a, a shout out. And apparently you discovered us during the dark days of 2020. I know exactly about what you speak. Um, those dark days are hopefully getting behind us now. Um, but Paula, I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. And then finally, we're getting towards the end now 
of the names of those of you who have solved the Fistimafel Sudoku hunt. So today I want to offer my congratulations to Joe Herman, Pai Wen Chen and Eric Bill, uh, Abinoff Jane, Adrian Frigeri, John Andrew McCulloch, Offrey Zachman, Amin Kalek, Palaf Goyal, Andy Mitz, Charles Thomas, Cassandra Coville, Anna Marie Pagane Paganelli, uh, Claude Petrie, Ozzy Carl, Mark Greenwell, Guillermo Harras Prieto, I think, uh, Billy Stevenson, Dylan Hanna, and Belinda Lomini. You all sent in the correct answer and that means you did awesomely well especially over Christmas where time is often at a premium so brilliant work one and all. Now let's have a look at stretching squares and see what Ambrose and Analytical Ninja have got in store for us. So the rules are straightforward. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply so that means we've got to put the numbers one to nine in every row, column and box once each. Uh, digits in cages must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So those three digits sum to 20, those three digits sum to 13. There's nothing about digits not repeating today because obviously digits can't repeat in these cages. Normal Sudoku rules will take care of that possibility. Um, and then along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So if this cell here was a two, this cell here would have to just, it just has to be higher than two. And then this cell would have to be higher than five. So two, five, eight would be a leg completely legitimate way of filling that thermometer. Now do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. Now, I don't really, I mean, obviously, it's something to do with the bulbs of these thermos and how that how how that's increasing the digits that have to go towards the tip. So I think I'm going to start down here. These this looks like the lowest thermo combination. So how does this work? Um, well, the answer to that is I don't know. Those okay. That digit is at least a three, because if I make that a one. And then I try and just increment in up steps of one each time. This is going to be a three. So this digit is at least a four because it can't be three again by Sudoku. Now it can, and it can't be a four, could it? If this was three, this would have to be more than four because if this was four, that would be a three again in order to make the, the cage add up to 10. So actually, this digit here, so one, so the minimum, the absolute minimum you can have in those two cells is eight. And therefore the absolute maximum you can have in this cell is two. So, so there is a small restriction on this cell here. And the maximum size in any, in either of those thermometer tips is therefore six isn't it we can't have seven you can normally have seven in a three cell 10 cage because you could have seven with a one two pair but obviously in this particular 10 cage that doesn't work because you can never put a one or a two at the end of a three cell thermometer so the maximum size so these digits are from three four five and six the maximum being six which would have to go with a three on the other side and a one in the middle of the cage So, okay, four. Okay, so that's actually, that's not as restrictive as I was hoping in terms of the bulbs. So the bulbs can't be as much as five because that would force a seven into the tips. Ah, and that's no use at all because you could go one and two and then that could be an eight. An eight is a very large number that has a lot of numbers lower than it. Okay, so I think this cell has an awful lot of options. Oh dear, this is totally not what, we, oh, this is not what I was expecting. I presumed that this little connect, or this little conurbation of squariness was going to be um, helpful. Right, so maybe it's not loaded, maybe it's high digits. Let's try high digits. That's, I think that's this square, isn't it? So is that better? Um... 
maybe actually, yeah, maybe that is better. Yes, okay, I can see I can see a way of thinking about this that seems to be more restrictive than this one was. So if we look at um, those two digits, what's the maximum size of those two digits? Well, given that this has to be a positive integer, uh, it's got to be at least one there. So these have got to add up to an absolute maximum of 16. And therefore, the, the maximum that these could add up to would be four less than 16. Because if this was, say, an, well, if this was 16, it would be a 7-9 pair. And then if that's 7, the, the, the maximum this could be was 6, the maximum this could be would be 5. So I, I'm, the reason I'm taking 4 off my 16 total is I'm taking 2 off for this thermometer because this is going to be 1 less than this digit. And then this is going to be 1 less than this digit and as an absolute maximum. So the maximum value of those two squares is four less, two for each thermo, than the maximum value of those cells, which means that the maximum value of these two squares is 12. Now it can't, actually, it can't be much less than 12, because if these took their maximum value of 12, this is still an eight. Um, so either these add up to 12 or they add up to 11, and that is an eight or a nine. And, okay, so if this is 8, these add up to 12, these add up to 16, and they are 7 and 9. If this is a 9, these could add up to 11 then, or 12. We know they could up to, add up to 12 with the 7, 9. If they add up to 11, these would add up to 15. Oh, that takes all the all the pressure off because we could have sixes introduced to these totals then six nine would work okay okay but I suppose right but that digits always one or two it's like this digit because these two cells have to add up to at least 15 we've just worked that out because these have a minimum value of 11 um, these have a minimum value of 15, which means this cell has a maximum value of 2. Um, which I guess means that that cell now is not a 3. Because if this cell was a 3, this thermometer would have to go 3, 2, 1, and that cell would be bust. So that's not being a 3, looks like it could be the next step. Um... Hang on, let me think about this. So the maximum value of those, this, this seems to be my only trick for this puzzle. I look at the maximum value of these two cells, which is now uh, 15. Take four off to get the max. Oh, no, that's totally not right. Oh, dear. Oh, in fact, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. I'm suddenly realizing if you look at the squares, if you look at that square and that square, the bulbs are in the higher cage for these. Now here the bulb are in the bulbs in the lower cage. So it's a very natural progression to get to a higher cage number because these digits in the tips are always going to be higher than the digits in the bulbs. Right, so this is what right. Oh goodness me. So what I should have done what ah, oh, so it's this one. This one is the most restricted, and that's, uh, that's completely and utterly inept of me. What I should have done is not just assumed, okay, I want the lowest total for the cages. That was not the sensible, clever way to think about this. The sensible, clever way to think about it was to say, okay, in which square is the difference between the cages, the maximum, where the bulbs are in the higher cage number? And I can now see that it's this one that I'm presuming is going to be under the most pressure. So the ma maximum value of those squares is 12. Yeah, that's it. That's nine. Oh, Simon, what a wally. <laughs> OK, OK, so just to go through that again, you can see those two squares can't add up to more than 12 because this needs to be at least one. Now, if those were 12, what's the maximum value of these two squares? Well, it's four less than 12, which is eight which means this square would still have to be a nine to make that work. So this, this is all entirely forced. These do add up to 12, which means this is a one. And now, okay, so I know,
Yeah, so now I can use the secret, presumably. I think I can use the secret. If I know that those add up to 12, I must know these are one, one less on each thermometer. So those add up to 10. So these add up to 8. Which means I've got 30 on these, I want to say. is that Have I just done that maths wrong? 30, 40, and this is a 5. I think that's right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let, let's, let's talk about the secret. So the secret is, and it's something I only tell my favourite people, if you're still with me after my walliness, uh, then you're definitely one of my favourite people. Now, the secret is that any complete box of a Sudoku will contain the digits 1 to 9 once each. And if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So I know all the digits in this box add up to 45, but these thermometers are, are very, we now know the composition of them. We don't know what the digits are, but we know the composition because we know that those two cells add up to 12. We know that for, therefore that these two cells have to add up to one less than 12. In it. Well, whatever this is, this is one less than it. Whatever this is, this is one less than it. So these two cells add up to 10. So, so far we're at 22. So these two squares add up to eight. So now we're at 30 for each of these thermos. Add 10 on, that's 40. The whole box adds to 45, so this is a 5. And that, oh, actually, that's helpful. Okay, so now I know what the tips are. And the tip, because, because remember those two squares added up to 12. Well, they can't be 5, 7, and they can't be 3, 9. So that is now a 4, 8 pair. And we know that in each instance, we're dropping one of the totals. So that must be a 3, 7 pair, and this must be a 2, 6 pair. And not quite, not quite, yeah, okay, no, this side is better now. Right, now look at this combination. If this was a six, we've got six, seven, and eight on the thermo. How could I make those three squares um, add up to 20 if that's a six, seven, and an eight? Six, seven, and an eight, six, seven, and eight add up to 21. So plus 20 is 41. That means those squares by the secret would have to add up to four. You can't make three different numbers add up to four in Sudoku. They will always add up to at least six because one plus two plus three is six. So this doesn't work if this is six. So this is two, two, three, four, eight, eight, seven, six. Get rid of sixes off the tips of these thermos. So now, oh, so now one of those is a five because we know that can't be a three, four pair from what we did earlier. So this is a five and two digits that add up to five, which is either one, four or three, two. Um, so, OK, I want to say now that neither of those can be a four anymore. That's right, isn't it? Because taking six out of the tip takes four out of the bulb. So let's get rid of that. So these come down a little bit. That's still not putting any pressure really on this digit. I suppose the maximum now these bulbs can be is a 2-3 pair. So this digit is at least a 6. And it can't be a 9 because these can't be less than a 1-2 pair. So OK, that's come down to 6, 7 or 8. It's, it's not brilliant, but it's better than we were doing. Right, now what on earth am I meant to look at now? Hmm, maybe these bulbs? Do I now know something about those that I didn't know before? What do these add up to? It depends what this is. So if that's eight, these add up to 12 and they can't be three, nine or four, eight. So they would be five, seven in one case. If, though, this is 9, these add up to 11 without being 2, 9, 3, 8, or 4, 7. So they would be 5, 6. Right, so there is always a 5 in one of those. Oh, which actually I could have got by Sudoku from working out there was a 5 in one of these. Ah, oh, right, no, okay, it's, it's easier than that. It's much easier than that. Where's 1 in column 6? And the answer is, I don't know, but it's definitely at the bottom of column six, which means that cells become a two. And if that cells become a two, 
we know that there must be a 2, a 3 and a 5 to make this add up. So all of a sudden we've got 8 here, which means these squares add up to a maximum of 4, which means there's definitely a 1 in them because they can't add up to 5 anymore. In fact, you can see, because one of these is a three, one of these is a two. Oh, that's it. That's really weird. Is that, obvi is, that, is that totally obvious what I've just done there? It probably is. But yeah, what I'm seeing is that because one of these is a three, one of these thermometers is a three, two, one thermometer. The two will always be in one of those cells, so that knocks two out of the other bulb. This forces this to be a one, three pair. So now that's a 2-4 pair, because one of the thermos is 1-2-3, the other is a, has a 3 in its bulb and a 5 in its tip, so it must be 3-4-5. Okay, so if I know that those squares add up to 4, I know that that square's a 7 by maths. <laughs> okay, that's fine, isn't it? Um... And therefore, okay, so now I know what those digits are. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay, this is useful, isn't it? These cells are 1, 4, and 9 by Sudoku. So 9 comes out of here. This becomes 8, which means those squares have to be a 5, 7 pair by mathematics. And if these are a 5, 7 pair, we know these are adding up to 16 now because they have to add up to at least 16 because those add up to 12, 14, 16 is the minimum and they can't be more than 16 because 17 would then be impossible so this is a 7 9 pair this is a 6 8 pair everything's getting everything's getting a bit more a bit clearer now oh, i was about to say this is a 2 3 4 thermometer because i looked at the 9 there and for some reason my brain said that those three cells have to add up to 9 without using one which is total and utter gibberish um Oh, no, no, okay, that is gibberish. This is not gibberish. Look, there's a nine cage which hasn't got a two or a four in it. So this nine cage cannot be one, two, six, and it cannot be two, three, four. So it is one, three, five. And the one is in the middle by Sudoku. So this is a three, five pair, which add up to eight. So the minimum sum of those cells is 12. So the maximum sum of this cell is four. And it can't be a one, so it's a two, three, or a four. That's not a one anymore by Sudoku. So we get the one in box two. This this puzzle is is exactly what I was hoping for today. It's so far at least it's not brutally difficult, but it is elegant and surprising, and most importantly of all, in a cracking the cryptic puzzle, it is interesting. Uh, this is four seven eight by Sudoku. That is not a seven. Um, now, I haven't, have I even looked at that square yet? I don't think I've looked at that square. That square could be could be interesting as well because the bulbs are in the higher cage. So I am going to look at that in a moment. I'm just going to check whether I've missed. Oh, I have. Look, Sudoku is placing an eight in one of these cells. which is interesting. Hang on, what's, I've got two sevens in this box. I've got too many sevens in this box. Ah, what's gone wrong here? Hang on, let's get rid of this. Why have I got, I can't have a seven nine pair there and a six seven pair there. Oh, I think that is a misclick. I've put six seven in. I think I meant to put six eight in because it looks to me like one of these is five six seven, one of these is seven eight nine. So I think that feels Oh, so I can't. I don't get an eight pencil mark now. That the eight is in one of those cells. Bobbins. Okay, let's try. Let's try a different tack then. What about? No, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, the eleven caged. Ah, oh, I've got nothing now. Okay, I'm, I'm totally broken. Let's. All right. Well, let's at least pencil mark those digits then. They're two, three, and six. Which? 
Oh, I can't do anything with that. Hmm. Double click the ones. They seem to be the most profligate digit, don't they? they they're, that's the most common digit. You can't put one in the tip of a thermo. So one in this, one in box six is a bit restricted. Um, right. I think the only thing we've got left to look at is this square down here. So what's going on here? If those added up to 10, which is their maximum, these have a maximum value of 6, which means this square is at least a 7. So that is a 7, 8 or a 9. And by the same token, I want to say that this square is only able to be 1, 2 or 3. Is that, is that true? If this was four, the maximum value of those squares would be seven. The maximum value of these squares would be three, and that would have to be a 10. So that is true. So this is, ah, ha, 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 I see you. Right, so this cell is a one, two, or a three by Sudoku. So which one of these bulbs is the three, two, one bulb? Now it can't be this one. If that's a three, two, one thermo, that cell's broken. So this is the five one, this is the five, four, not five, four, two, five, four, three. That's three, two, one. This isn't one. This isn't four. This cell is not three anymore. So that might do something to those cells. We'll check that in a second. Um, three is on this thermometer, which, oh, okay, here's something interesting. Three is on this thermometer, but it's not there, because if it was there, you'd have to go two, one, and that cell wouldn't have a value. So the three is early on this thermometer. So, right, here's something interesting then. That cell is really low. It's a one or a three, in fact, because I, if this is a three, that's got to be lower than it. It would have to be one, because it couldn't be two. The only other situation that can exist is that this itself is a three. So that is a one or a three. Um, hmm. Yeah, in fact, OK, I see. So one in one in box nine only lives in one of two places. It's got to be in one of those two cells because it can't be it can't be anywhere in the, on along a thermo except in the bulb. So, okay, so what, what's the maths telling us here? If this is one, that's 10. This is a six maximum, and that would be a seven. This is two, that's nine maximum. This is three. Oh, hang on, that doesn't, what's going on? I think I'm going mad because that worked. But I'm sure that worked before. If that's a two, they have a they have a max. Well, they they do add up to nine. Nine minus four is five. I think I I don't think I said five before. I think I said something else. So five would work, and that could be an eight. So if this is nine, this would have to be a one, three pair, adding up to four. These would have to add up to at least eight, but they could up to add up to more than eight. So that's fine. Yeah, okay, oh, that's weird. So that doesn't seem to resolve it. So I'm now feeling like this little, this, this thermo down here, or this this square arrangement, it, it sort of, it well, it, it pinched this, didn't it, in quite an interesting way. But it doesn't seem to have solved the puzzle. Oh, OK. In column three, by Sudoku, I've got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So these cells have got to be six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, can we do any magic with that? That's not seven. That's not six or nine. That's not seven. Oh, okay, so that this one would become very interesting if that was um, if if this one was the seven eight nine thermo, that would force this to be a six.
Ah, I've got it. I've got it, actually. And this has been available for ages. It's beautiful. Right. It's really simple as well. Okay. I want, if you've not spotted it, and I'm sure most of you have, have a look at the top of this grid and pause the video for a moment or two. Give yourselves time to, to spot what's going on. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. This is a proper chess, chess edition today. <laughs> um, right. Look at these. This little arrangement of, of 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 digits, and think about those cells. Now, within those four cells, there are two sevens because one of these is a seven, and one of these is a seven. So, where does the seven go in this row? Well, it can't be over here. It's not over here. It's not there, and it can't be there by Sudoku. So that is a seven, and that has been available for a while. Apologies. Um, now, what's that doing? I don't know. Well, it's giving me a seven here by Sudoku. So we'll, we'll take the we'll take the easy win and worry about other things after that. We can put sevens into one of those two cells. Okay, so this digit now, well, those two digits add up to nine, don't they? So this is, oh, so that can't be two anymore because that would put another seven here. So this is five or six which means beautiful. That can't be five anymore because this can't, there's no way of filling this thermo if that's a five. So that's a three, that's a five, that's a six by the fact it has to be between seven and five. Um, that's not a six anymore. Can we keep that going? Probably. What's that digit then? That digit is higher than three, but it's not four, and it can't be as high as six, so that is five. So that's five, that's six, they add up to 13, so that's three, and we're off to the races again, with that not being able to be six. That not being able to be six, so the six comes and lives down in box seven instead of where it, where it's, where it could have lived before. Those squares now have to be eight, nine, and five. So let's put that in. So these squares are one, two, and four, and that's not able to be one, and that's not able to be two. And we will now say bobbins. What does that mean? Uh, oh, no, it's gorgeous. Right, it's another of these little tricks, like with the one, two, three down there. This now can't be the seven, eight, nine thermometer. It would break this one. So that tells us this is the five, six, seven. This is the seven, eight, nine. So that's nine, that's four. That's six in box two. It's the only place it can live. We need two, three, and four along here. Two, three, four, two, three, four. Two and f oh, two and five in this row, so we can do that by Sudoku. Four goes in the corner, not th not three, so no song. Uh, we get we get fours, eights, and oh, it's it is a four, eight, nine triple, but that's eight or nine, giving me a pair in the top row. So that's two or three. That could be a three in the corner. It could be. Um tempted to look at that cell but I, I'm just going to check whether we've got more Sudoku we can do over here. 4, 8 and 9. That's not 9. Those cells are known in the sense they're 2, 7 and 9 which means I get the 2 look because it's got a 7 and a 9 above it. Two, Yes okay now we do some Sudoku in this box and that's forced to be a 2 which must be huge because now those are adding up to nine and they're not two, seven, one, eight, or three, six. So this is four and five. Don't know the order. Um, but if they add up to nine, we know that the maximum those two cells can add up to is five, which actually is not that helpful. Okay, if that was one, this could be four. No, but that would break that, so it can't be four. So the maximum value of this is three. Okay, so that is three, in fact. That's what we've just deduced. It's a bit strange how we've deduced it, but I think I think it's right. If those add up to nine, the maximum value of those is five, because we have to knock 
two off each thermo to get to the the bulb values. And therefore this has to be a one, two, three or four in order for these two to add up to five at most. But this can't be a one two or a two and it can't be a four because this can't be a six. So I think that is three. And therefore that's five, that's four. And this is one because it can't be two. Now, now that's going to mean this cell is a nine by a process of mathematics. So we get nine and seven. We get two in the corner, not three. We get two here, we get three here. We get three here, four here. We get four here by thermologic. Eight, nine, four. Eight, nine. Eight by Sudoku. Five, nine pair at the bottom. That's become a seven by Sudoku. This is a four by Sudoku. That's an eight. That's a nine. That's a six. That's a one. We're done, aren't we? Nine, five here. Um, okay, now it really is done, I think. One, six, eight. So that's a one. This is a six, eight pair. We might need to do some work at the bottom. That's got to be eight in the corner. Eight, six. In this box, well, let's look at this row, actually. We need five and seven. So seven goes here. Five goes here. And we'll fill in this digit last. It's going to be three. Um, yeah, it's going to be three. We won't do it last. It, it, the tension was sort of relieved from the position, wasn't it? Um, to use another chess analogy. And that seems to be how to solve the puzzle. Very cool indeed. Stretching squares indeed. It's just a lovely idea and beautifully executed. The fact that you can use the bulbs and this like this this sort of four difference to create these patterns is a it's just lovely. And the way that they've got they've managed to get five in the grid that all work together in a very appealing and elegant way is quality setting and it's something I would absolutely expect. I've come to expect from these two initialed A people, Ambrose and Analytical Ninja, um, solved by a third uh, A initialed person, Mr. A. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Let me know if you finished the chess problem too. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.